Let's talk about a guy who, there's no getting around it, had a disappointing 2022 season. The Cardinals in general had a very disappointing season coming off a playoff birth in 2021, where there was a point in 2021, people forget, where it seemed like it was just a given that Cliff Kingsbury was going to win Coach of the Year and Kyler Murray was going to win MVP. Uh, obviously, that was around halfway through the season. Obviously, things went off the rails uh, after that. But what happened in 2022? What went so wrong? First, let's look at some numbers, starting off with just straight up box score statistics, which aren't the best tool, but are still a tool we can use. And this was a career low passer rating for Kyler Murray, which is surprising because, you know, you know, it was lower than he was as a rookie. And if you think about uh, the situation he came into as a rookie, it's hard to imagine this situation was too much worse than it was last year, right? As in the situation last year was too much worse than his rookie year is what I'm trying to say. Uh, well, you know, I mean, the passer rating was worse. 14 touchdowns to seven interceptions isn't a horrible touchdown to interception ratio, though. So that is kind of worth noting. I mean, you know, uh, that's kind of a, a, a two to one ratio, which is about what he's been at for his career. So that part isn't necessarily the issue. It's more so to gaining yards, because even his completion percentage is right around where he's at for his career. So it's more so to yardage totals that were lower in 2022. Also looking at pro football focus grades here, which again, I know this isn't everyone's cup of tea either, but I like to look at it. You see that, again, part of it was he had a career low in snaps this year. He was definitely banged up uh, at times, and I think that that would show at times. You see that still... Uh, his grade this time was better than his rookie year, but still significantly below the past two seasons. Past two years, he was over 82 both years, whereas this season, he was at 67.1 for his overall offensive grade and 63.4 for his passing grade, a solid 23.3 points lower than what he was just a year ago. I mean, we're talking nearly a, you know, Carson Wentz style drop off from one year to the next. What went wrong here? And is this going to be a Carson Wentz situation where he goes from being uh, an MVP candidate to all of a sudden just not never being the same? Or is this just one fluky year? Well, let's get into it. Let's start off with this play. When I watch some tape of Kyler, the highlights stand out. They still do. The star plays are still there. He definitely can make these highlight real level plays and maybe no better example than what happened in the Raiders game where it's going to be a man coverage play and you see, you know, you have a receiver running the route you see on the screen. It's a good route against his coverage, right? Because, you know, a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, these things can definitely get open and let's see what happens. So Kyler takes takes the snap, he is going to look in that direction, and you're going to see at this point, the safety isn't really close enough to be able to impact this play, although it is worth mentioning, you can't lob it up too much, that's kind of the one thing, as long as you throw it with not too much air under it, you'll be fine, but that's just, you know, that's what worth noting when it comes to the safety. Another thing worth noting is that Kyler Murray is standing on the hash marks closer towards the top of the screen, so it's a bit of a tougher angle to make this throw, and there isn't a ton of separation, but it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and it's far enough down the field that Kyler wants to take this chance. And as you see, look at this throw. I mean, this is exactly where Murray wanted to put that football very far down the field and with a tough angle. These are the kind of things we definitely saw still relatively consistently with Kyler last year. Kyler Murray is a guy who is not known for being a play-in and play-out, throw six-yard uh, slants over the middle. That's just not his game so much. Not to say that he can't do that, but what he's known for is his explosives. He's a home run hitter, and when he had opportunities to hit home runs, he did hit them. Like, this one's another uh, example of, I think, kind of what happened last year, where it's going to be uh, essentially what's going to end up being a one-on-one -on -one matchup with A.J. Green. You see his route on the screen. Watch how one this play begins. Again, you got to make your decision quickly right here. Is this going to be open? It's tough, but Kyler kind of feels like with no one further behind Green and Peterson, maybe just throw it over the top of Peterson. Could it work out? Well, Kyler's going to take this chance, and it is not going to work out. Who do you want to blame there? Do you want to blame A.J. Green? Do you want to blame uh, Patrick Peterson? It seems like Green blamed himself for that one. Uh, maybe you could just give credit to the defense if you want to, but the reality is these plays weren't getting made the way that they typically do, and a big part of that, has to, you have to assume, was just because you know Kyler barely played with DeAndre Hopkins last year. So not having him, I think, did affect his game pretty significantly. 
That being said, he made some incredible plays. This play was one of the greatest plays I think you will ever see. I'm not even going to break it down. I'm just going to talk over it as uh, it happens. It's a long play, so buckle in. So Kyler Murray takes a snap, and he's going to look around, and nothing gets open towards the end zone. So he starts scrambling, but you see how he's able to juke out several uh, Raiders players, get to a position where he can throw again, but still nothing is open. So what do you do when you're here? Well, keep scrambling. Do it again. Kyler Murray runs again, eventually finds a way to, this was on a two-point conversion, get into the end zone. That's one of the greatest plays you will ever see, I think. And what's so fascinating about that play is it's an example of a quarterback making making something happen when the offense gave him nothing. I mean, no receiver were open there. And again, you could argue, well, the offensive line did a good job. And they did, but they gave up a pressure pretty quickly. About two and a half, three seconds into the play, Kyler was just able to scramble around so well. You know, they, did a good, they did a good job of hustling and not giving up. But really, that was mostly Kyler. That was Kyler figuring stuff out and finding a way to make a play. And these are the kind of things that he is capable of and still capable of. Even in a bad year, he was still doing stuff like this, which is why... I think I am leaning on the side of, I think Kyler is fine. I think Kyler is going to return to, uh, you know, being a sort of top eight quarterback like we've seen him be in the past. I do think this year was a fluke. Now, to be clear, that does not mean it's a perfect year for him or that none of the faults were his own. But I think you could argue that some of the issues were his own, but also at the same time were because of the situation. A play like this where you see the route on the screen, tough, tough route, right? Going to be into double coverage here. Kyler takes the snap. He is going to look in that direction. There's pressure coming, though. So he's about to get hit, cannot step into this throw. It's already not totally open. The only way you're really going to get this throw made is if you overthrow the defense. But given the fact that you can't step into this throw, probably not one he should make. But I think at the same time, it's possible that Kyler kind of feels as though he has to do too much in this situation. He has to go above and beyond to try and keep his team in it because the reality is if he doesn't have a great game, the Cardinals just do not win. Kyler takes this chance, and again, maybe that's me making an excuse, but uh, when he was getting hit, that was just never going to be a completion. It ends up being an interception instead, which is not ideal. You don't like interceptions. You would like to avoid interceptions if possible. That's my hot take. Uh, you know, obviously not something you want to see have happen. Kyler, you know, over the course of his career, has turned the ball over too much. Like I said, a 2-1 to -one touchdown interception ratio is fine, but it's a bit on the high side for a good quarterback. You would like to see him, I think, that you know, touchdown totals have, have been fine, I think, especially, you know, part of it is he gets a lot of rushing touchdowns, which that doesn't factor in. But also, you know, turnovers can be a bit high. He is kind of a consistent double-digit turnover guy, so maybe getting uh, rid of those to some degree could help, I think, and that's maybe something he has to work on. You know, but at the same time, those are kind of the the issues. Is it a is it a disaster season for Kyler Murray? Yeah, it was a disaster season for Kyler Murray, of course. Do I think that Kyler Murray is washed up? Do I think that Kyler Murray, uh, you know, the twenty twenty one season was a fluke? Not really, because I feel like you know we've seen four seasons of him. Two of them were very good. One of them was his rookie year, and then the other one was this year, which I'm kind of going to go with what's the bigger sample size say, and the bigger sample size says he's good, so that's what I'm going to kind of lean with, and I think he's still good. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.